Why did you end up joining the Air Force? I personally joined the Air Force because, uh, I don't know, like, as a kid, I've always just been, like, fascinated with airplanes. Like, I always wondered how they work and, like, how they could fly and stuff. And I always knew I wanted to, like, work on them. And my uncle was in the Air Force for four years, and he always was, like, a big advocate. I'm one of seven children, so going to college was, like, I knew I was starting my life in debt if I went to college, like, by, <laughs> just, just on my own free will. So I know the Air Force, like, at least get uh, my, like, trade experience, and then, like, I can get free college and, like, get at least my life set up. My mom and dad didn't graduate college and you know, they always like advocated that. I grew up in a apartment and slept on a couch. So you know, like I knew like if I wanted to, to make something of myself, I needed to like put into work to do it. So I, I joined the Air Force like with that intent. And like, I knew I wanted to be with airplanes. So like Air Force, at least the military, like I knew they're all about the jets and helicopters and stuff like that. So I was like, you know, like I wanna go with this one. <laughs> Did you join right out of high school then? We were straight out of high school. As soon as I graduated, I had like my last summer, like we had my grad party slash going away party. And then as, as soon as that was done, I, I got on the bus and, <laughs> and went, went to the Air Force. So how long have you been in the Air Force and what is your current rank? I've been in for three and a half years, a little over that. It'll be four years of September. I'm currently a senior airman, which is E4. And you're about to test for and I, staff this I, year for the first time? Yeah, I test on the 15th of May. Dang. So, so, so coming up. Yeah, like so not even two weeks. Yeah, two weeks like, I, I test. And I'm, I'm praying. <laughs> You've been studying? A little bit. <laughs> I need to be studying a lot more. But. So what is your job name, title, and AFSC? The official name of my job is Aircraft Metals Technology, but we just go by Metals Tech. And the AFSC is 2A7X1. Did you get this job in depth as a specific contract or did you get it as an open mechanical contract? I got it like straight from depth. I had like my listing and I actually put aircraft metals technologies like number four. And then like two weeks later, he's like, yeah, you got the job. Like you can what ship whatever. What was your other three above that? Do you remember? Um, I actually think I had aircraft structural maintenance above that. I honestly Be like. Thankful you didn't get it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I honestly I didn't even know what, like metals tech was. I literally went into like the mechanic side of like the listing and whatnot, and I was like, I know I want to work on the jet. I know I want to be hands on. I just found a bunch that I was like, that's hands on, that's hands on, that's hands on. I put it on the list, Dang. and and you know they were just like, well, you got so one you're of them. Just like happy if you got anything, yeah. it was hands on with aircraft. Yeah, you like I just like, I. I just wanted to be hands-on. Like I always wanted to know how they work, and I was like, if I can be hands-on and like figure out how they work on my own, and like you know put my own parts on it and whatnot, like I, I would have been happy either way. So when you signed your contract, did you sign four or six years, and why? I signed four years. That was advice given to me by my uncle, who like was in the Air Force uh, for four years, and he, he told me like you never know like what you're gonna like, what you're gonna dislike. Um, if you do sign a six-year contract, of course they're gonna like offer you bonuses and all that stuff, but He's like, you, you might be a year in and hate your life, and then you got to be in for five more years. And he's like, or you can be in for four years, totally love your job, and be like, you know, I can sign up for four or six more now. So we'll roll off of that one. Yeah. And you just recently did what? I recently just re-signed for four years. I'll be serving at, at the very least eight years in the military. And even then, eight years, you could still take your experience and walk. Oh, yeah. If, yeah. You, if you chose. To. Yeah, I, I keep signing for four because, like, if I do find a job that will offer me more money or, you know, I get my college degree and, like, can do that, then I can walk. I always try to give myself that option just in case, you know, like, you get that horrible work environment and mm -hmm. whatnot. And you're just like, man, I just got to get out. So something a lot of people that are researching jobs in the Air Force want to know about the jobs they're researching is where is tech school and how long are you there? Tech school for Metals Tech is in Texas at Shepard Air Force Base. For me, it was about six months, but I went during Christmas, so we had like those extra like two weeks off, so it's probably like five and a half to six months. It, it's not long. A lot of machining for like half of it, and then the other half is welding because that's, we kind of have like two jobs in one. We do machining and welding, so like three months of machining, three months of welding, then you get like your your basic math and stuff because machining is all about angles and trying to take measurements and all that other stuff. So I've heard some bad things about Shepard, but then I've heard good things about Shepard also. So what was your experience with tech school overall? Would you, would you say it was like terrible or it was, it was okay or it was great? Honestly, I had a fun time, but I think it was just because of like the people I was with. Like, you know, you find yourself like everyone in tech school, like I had like all my classmates always wanted to go do something like, you know, like we always, we always went to like the, the oh man, the Airman's Club or whatnot, and mm -hmm. like the 
we always played pool or ping pong or like the video games and then like we went out and and we went out to like the mall and stuff so like we always had like something to do we were always finding something to do like because we all knew like we were all there by ourselves but like we were all there together by ourselves so we always like found something and that's Might what you make yeah the best of it, 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 it and that, that's what like the air force like it, no mm -hmm. matter what no matter where you are you, like it's just me and my wife right now but like you know we got no one around us but we're making the best of it this is mm -hmm. our life like you know you just it, it it everything everywhere you go is what you make of it. Like you can sit in your room all day and be like, man, there's nothing to do or whatnot. Or you can go out and just you know go to like the Airmen's Club or like the little like get together place where people are playing ping pong and pool and just like challenge people and whatnot. Like I've never played ping pong before in my life, but like I played so much ping pong in tech school <laughs> and I yeah, got like pretty good at it. And I was like, you want to play? You want to play? Like. You know, you can just stay busy. Yeah, 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 you just gotta stay busy, keep your mind busy. You know, uh, tech school for metal tech, like some jobs you'll get homework and whatnot. Like metal tech, it, it's all it, the whole job is hands on. So like we got no homework or whatnot. So you go to class, you get back, and like you just do whatever you want. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it was a good time. So does metal tech limit the amount of places that you can go, or can you go anywhere? Because some jobs are very like specific to certain right. airframes or certain locations. So. What's the situation with Metals Tech? Metals Tech, you can go to any base with aircraft, pretty much, and that, that's basically all of them. Okay. You can literally go to any airframe, any base that... And you don't get locked in on specific aircraft? No, you don't get locked in. So you actually, this isn't your first base. This is my second base. So what airframes did you work on before? I worked on F-22 fighter jets before, and, and now I'm on the, the helicopters out here. Okay, so totally different airframes. Completely yep. different. <laughs> Jet to helicopter, yeah, but you know, I've, I've worked on both now. I've I've welded on a helicopter. The jets are a lot newer, so like if something breaks, they won't they'll want the part completely replaced rather than welded. But we still do like welding and whatnot. On helicopters, everything's broken. <laughs> <laughs> helicopters is like just fix it. Yeah. <laughs> so this might be one of the most important things that I ask you in this whole interview, and it's going to be what exactly do you do in your job? Like what all does your job entail that you would have to do and explain? Because sometimes. Air Force will try to explain what people do in their job, and then people get another job, and they're like, no, this is not even accurate. <laughs> you lied. <laughs> yeah, so what what would it be if you could give like a description of all the things that you do in your job? Well, for, for Metals Tech, it's basically like anything on an airframe that's metal that needs to be fixed, we fix it. But uh, we do a lot of machining and welding, so like basically we could take a block, like a two-by-two two block of metal, and we'd actually have to like cut it down, shape it, reshape it to make a bracket to fit inside this aircraft or whatever. And you know, we'd have to weld it on, you'd have to you know, rivet it on or whatnot, but you have like literally thinking outside the box. We have a, a block of metal and you have to think about how am I gonna get this? You're like a sculptor. Yeah, a, a metal yeah. sculptor pretty much <laughs> for aircraft. Like That's like the best way to put it. Like we take machinery, we take uh, lathes to like spin it and make bushings. We take mills to actually like cut down the part to make brackets. We use water jets, which is like the coolest machine in the world. I was, I, say, I, was like, oh, I love man. the water jet. I like, forgot about water jets. Like it, look up, like just people cutting stuff up we'll on water throw, jet. We'll throw a link up above yeah. so you guys can check out what water jets are. Water jetting is like my favorite part of the job. Like and everyone says, hey, we need this cut out of water jet. I always volunteer just cause like watching how that thing works, it literally takes a stream of water and pierces metal and like it, it cuts out designs and shapes and it's all computer programmed so you're like hey i want to i want to cut out you know the las vegas knights logo like you can put you could put the whole picture in there you could tell it hey i want this part cut out i want this part to be kept in and you'll just watch water go around metal and, and cut out the design you want it's it's the coolest thing like we literally have the freedom to to like use our imagination and like the the freedom to to just take any sheet of metal any block of metal and make what we want out of it to make sure that these aircrafts fly to do their job. And that's like the, the best way to put it. Like you, you literally, a lot of jobs in the Air Force, it's very by the book. Like you have to do it this way. You have to do this. Like metals, metals tech, they're like, hey, here's this block of metal. Please make it work for us. We don't care how you do it. If you if you fit these dimensions, like hey, you, it's gotta be three inches by two inches and it has to fit in this spot. Like we don't care how you make it work. Like please make it work, make this thing fly. and like. So if you don't like using like a CNC machine, you could use a lathe just because. Yeah, like, if like you know it, how to make it that shape. Yeah, pretty much. Like so you can pick and choose what machinery you kind of want to yeah, use. Yeah, you can. To like, make it work. You know, we got hand tools. We got like actual machinery. Like we 
we got like you know one that spins it sideways and one that like keeps it still and you have the machine actually spinning and cutting from the top you guys are like woodworkers but for metal yeah that's how it is yeah like, that's what all your guys machinery rem reminds me of, yeah like, just I, woodworking I, stuff. I did wor woodworking in high school and like you've worked on like a, a a woodworking lathe where you actually like take your tooling and like take it to the wood but like we would never do that for metal all the like the lathe, it, the lathe works the exact same it spins but like you actually have tooling like with like an arm that like will cut in for you because there's no way like your hand can take like that. <laughs> so, like, I'm not strong enough. <laughs> I'm not I'm not strong enough to do this. But yeah, like it's a lot more um, precision. Uh, a lot of our measurements actually have to be within five thousandths of an inch, and that is point zero zero five of accuracy. And to like just give a, a, a reference, I believe a piece of hair is three thousandths of an inch. Damn. So like we have to be pretty close to like like basically within a hair within a hair of our, our measurements and uh, the machine. But they don't care how you get there. They don't as care long how we get, get there. Within a hair of the yeah, measurement. exactly. Like <laughs> it, it, it's it's crazy, but like they're like we don't care how you get there, but if you can make this work, like make it work. And that's what like that's what I love about it. Like I have the imagination, and like it's not like I have to file a book. Like okay, like I have to put it on this machine. I have to go in this many thousands, and I have to I have to like you know use these tools like i could be like man like this this machine isn't working for me i need to make this part i'm gonna try this and like do it this way and like cut it down this way or and you it, could even like do something that's challenging just yeah because you, you want to be like oh, yeah you know this, this sounds a little too easy like yeah. let's, let's try spinning it sideways yeah. or <laughs> <laughs> let's do it with blindfold <laughs> <laughs> right so we, we really like we just get to craft things out of metal and just make it work and make these these aircraft fly just and all all we have is a blueprint that says hey this is how the part needs to look make it look that way so you guys also do welding too yeah we we do welding um most of the time it's just like little cracks in like the the airframe and whatnot or like um we work with uh age and like they have like you know stands and stairs and stuff and like for their safety like stuff cracks out so we have to weld it make sure it's structurally safe so they can like get up on top of the aircraft and whatnot so a lot of time we'll, we will fix their stuff so you'll fix like stands and yeah stuff. We'll, we'll fix stands and whatnot um on the f-22 that i worked on we really don't weld on that aircraft because it's so delicate that the, if something's broken they'll just replace it because it like that thing goes through like so many g-forces and all that stuff but but like helicopters i've already like welded parts on the helicopter and like they're just like it's not going to go through as much g's it's like able to withstand like welding and like oh if i weld it, it's not going to crack out from the pressure and whatnot so we will we will weld on some aircraft some aircrafts are just be like yeah make a new part let's order a new part but uh a, a lot of time it's it's making the equipment that other people use safer to use so that way it, the stand doesn't fall apart and you know hurt someone yeah, injured yeah, aircraft yeah. Injured from that <laughs> So the last question I'm going to ask is what advice do you have for somebody that's interested in this job or somebody that just got this job and is about to join? Advice that I have? Yeah. What advice do you have for somebody that's going to be filling your shoes one day? Oh, man. But that's, a, that's a really good question because me personally, I love this job. I think it's the best job in the Air Force. So like the advice I could give is like go for this job. Like you're, like, <laughs> you're, you're going to love it. Like, you know. The, and then somebody's going to get it and be like. I hate this guy. Yeah. I mean, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of like stupid stuff that they'll make you do in metal tech because you know, like we try to keep our air because you don't have rules, so they're yeah. like, yeah, you can do this. Yeah, so like, <laughs> so like we we try to keep our jets and aircraft, you know, like at the top, you know, health that they can be. So a lot of the time we won't get like you know making brackets and stuff like that that often. Uh, it, jobs come in, of course, but. A lot of time they'll have you just like make random stuff just to keep your skills up and you know or make going away gifts. Yeah, or make going away gifts pretty much. Like that's you what make, the water jets for. Yeah, that's what the water jets <laughs> for. You'll learn that too, but but I love it. So sometimes you'd be like, Man, like this is so stupid. Like I, I've been in for three and a half years and like sometimes you'd be like, Hey, I wanna see like how your skills are. I'm like, Man, you worked with me for three and a half years, you know I'm good at this, you know, but it, it's just stuff trying to like they'll, they'll tell you stuff and just take it with a grain of salt pretty much, like they're they're doing it to help you be better and whatnot. You know, you're like me. I I know I'm good. I know I can cut out this part. But like the more practice you get, the more the more stuff you do cut out. Like even though you can do it, you're gonna keep up with that because as soon as as soon as like you take six months off and you you don't you don't really work with the machinery. You're like man, I know I know how to do this, but like totally forgot. They, uh, they <laughs> brain fart. Yeah. Like, how do I set this? So like there there will be like dumb stuff that 
they ask you to do, but like take it with a grain of salt because like honestly, Meadow Tech I think is the coolest job in the world. We get, I feel like the most freedom out of any other job in the Air Force to especially like especially in maintenance, especially in maintenance, yeah, yeah, maintenance, yeah. maintenance like. For aircraft, maintenance is very crucial. Like, you know, like you don't want to make a mistake or that's someone's lives, life in, a, in an aircraft going down. So we get a lot more freedom than anyone else in like maintenance to just make things work. So I, I honestly think that Meadows Tech would be the best maintenance job like for anyone to pick. If you're going to aircraft- Air Force is going to have an influx of people yeah. putting down Meadows Tech. <laughs> I, I sure hope so, man, because the Meadows Tech, like the, the stuff we do, like it, it it's it's amazing. I'm just honestly, like if, if you're metals tech, like practice welding. We do TIG welding, which is like literally you have a torch and, and a rod and you have to control the heat of what's coming out of the torch with your foot. And then you have stuff called MIG welding, which literally like the heat and the rod and everything comes out of uh, like a gun pretty much. You pull a trigger and, and you weld. So like just get yourself familiar with that because like if you do go to your first base or your first career and you're able to do that stuff right away it's gonna look a lot better for you um machining wise like just look up videos of cnc machining look up videos of water jetting or like people using a lathe like just get yourself like familiar so at least like you know what you're talking about at the very least did you guys have a lot nicer equipment at your last base than here oh yeah uh, my last base uh <laughs> <laughs> the only reason i know is because i was in the shop that you're yeah. in now oh yeah that's the shop i got out of yeah and everybody complained about how our shop doesn't have like any of the stuff that most bases have or like as nice of equipment. Right, yeah, the, the, this base, like I came from Panama City, Florida where we had like two whole, like one room was dedicated to machinery. It was a whole bay. We had three lathes, three or two mills, two CNC's, a CNC lathe. Like, we had a water Kadena jet room. like a six axis like CNC machine yeah, or something. Yeah, those things are crazy. It man. was insane. Yeah. And we moved like every way possible. You, like, you can literally make awesome. anything you want yeah. out of like a six axis CNC. And then like we had a whole other room for welding. But here like you have literally one lathe, one mill. Everything's within five feet of each other. Everything's within five <laughs> feet of each other. Like we, our welders are right next to our mills, and you have to like separate them by a curtain so no one goes blind. And then uh, if we if we need to use like a CNC or something, we have to go ten minutes down the road to a different shop. But you know, like I still like honestly none of that stuff bothers me. Like you know, like sometimes you're just like, man, I really don't want to get in my car and and drive ten minutes. But the work we do is honestly like so fun in trying to figure out how to do everything. Just like. I'm a, like I love like solving puzzles and whatnot, and like my job is literally one big puzzle every day. Like how I'm gonna solve this? How am I gonna make this work so that that way like these guys can get the part they want? Like it. So if you're not good with with math, there is a lot of math. Would this be a good job, or it, if you're like not a hands-on person, probably not a good job. Then. Yeah, if you if you're not if you're not really hands-on, like there's the entire job is hands-on. Like if you like if you like doing like sitting back here and doing like your paperwork and whatnot, like. Metals Tech is definitely not the job to go into, <laughs> but like if you love working with your hands, if you love trying to like figure stuff out, if you love doing like the math to figure out like, you know, yeah, a lot of times you have to get within 0 .005 of an inch. So you're going to have to be like, okay, 0 .009 minus 0 .004. That's how much I got to cut in. And a lot of time you work with like angles and whatnot to get the bracket to fit. So if you're not like, if you don't like math, there you is going to like be a, geometry. Yeah, if you don't like <laughs> geometry, because there's a lot of angles and, and all that stuff, then uh, then, then try, definitely try to look into something else. But like, I honestly, I love math. I love trying to solve puzzles. I I love like I knew I wanted to work hands on with the aircraft, and like, I'm I'm not out like every day on that jet putting my hands on it. But like when work comes in and I have to put my hands on it, like I love it. Like I I love like trying to figure out all right, how am I going to get in here? How am I going to make this part work? It's 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 just so much fun. Like, <laughs> it's a fun job to figure they're gonna, out. And they're gonna watch this video and be like, "This guy needs to be a recruiter." Then you're gonna get slaughtered. I know. And then you're gonna be like, "I don't want to be a recruiter. I want to do my job. I want to be hands on. I don't want to work behind the desk." 